Hey there, as you saw from the title, uh, this is the unboxing of the Aventon level uh, electric bike. Right? So, um, I hate unboxing videos, so why am I making one? And you'll see in a few seconds why. Uh, but I'll also do a video following this one where uh, I'll assemble the bike and just show you how it is. I've never seen uh, done it before. The last time I've assembled a bike was like hmm, 45 years ago, um, so a long time. And uh, so I'm just going to use some uh, simple uh, tools. Uh, so a little history. I did a lot of research on uh, which e-bikes to do. I, I did a lot of research on building my own e-bike. Uh, give a hats off to uh, Johnny Nerdout, who has taught me a lot about the e-bikes and what to look for. Uh, but uh, in the end, I basically decided to go with the uh, Venton level for, from all the reviews I saw on YouTube. And um, so I did that. And so last week, uh, so on Wednesday, I placed the order with a Venton, uh, very easy. And the price that I paid was the price that they have listed there. Um, and I got an email the following day saying that the bike is uh, being shipped and I should get it within a week, so seven days. So I should have gotten it the following Wednesday. Um, so that's great news, seven days sh uh, shipping from order. Uh, super, it was on FedEx ground. Uh, the, then on Friday, I got an email saying, oh, great news, we're gonna ship it to you early. You're gonna get it on Monday. Great, I was on vacation then, and I said, I'll be home by Monday. Um, and I had to go to work, so I asked my spouse to uh, stay home and make sure that the box arrived. And the box needs to have a signature, so you need to have somebody home to receive the bike. Um, so come on Monday, uh, all excited about getting the bike. Uh, the wife was home, uh, waiting for it, and lo and behold, it never arrived. And I got an email later in the day saying, oh, it will be shipped the following day. Um, so a thumbs down to FedEx uh, since we had to stay home or she had to stay home and wait for the bike uh, which never came and now she had to stay home a second day uh, to wait for the bike uh, that came. So I've been tracking it on the computer and at, it arrived at our lo local FedEx office which is about five miles down the road at 2 a.m. on Tuesday. So I said, oh, it'll arrive early in the morning, shouldn't be a problem. Well, it didn't arrive until 2 p.m. on Tuesday. And so it got here, so I was happy about that. I just wasn't happy that they said it was gonna be Monday and then they changed it at the last, later that day and changed it to the following day. So, uh, you know, FedEx, you know, people's lives here and we have to put on hold what we're doing just for waiting your delivery guy. So we would appreciate a better um, accuracy on your delivery time. So when I got the box, uh, and we will do the unboxing using some simple tools. Uh, I'll use the box cutters over here to cut the tape. Uh, some pliers, these are needle nose pliers, but you can use pretty much any pliers to remove the staples. And, so, and then some diagonal cutters to cut out the, uh, the zip ties. Okay. So when I got the box uh, from FedEx and came home and all excited about the bike, and then I saw the condition of the bike, and here it is. So as you can see, the box was arrived damaged, and right over here is where it's damaged, all the way down and all the way up over here. So I had a quick peek. That it seems to be where the empty space is over here um, so we'll check it out and see when we pull it out if there's any damages or scratches on it but uh, I've heard a lot of people on YouTube saying that the uh, so they received the box is damaged so maybe a advice to Aventon to look at your packaging talk to your packaging engineer and see what you can do to reinforce the boxes to make sure they don't arrive uh, damaged and I know it's sometimes out of your control with uh, your carriers, uh, but there's something maybe you can do if a few people are getting the boxes damaged, right? Uh, all right, so something to look for. So let's start on the unboxing. Some other points on the packaging over here. We can see 
there are staples on the top and tape but some staples are missing and a few of them on the ends are, are still there and this tape over here got rubbed so this thing got dragged on some uh, truck bed and or stuff like that or, or on the floor and the staples got ripped off and the tape got broken up so another little uh, something to advise for maybe for Aventon is to use reinforced uh, uh, paper tape uh, Amazon uses it it's great strong tape uh, and it'll stick very well to the, the cardboard. All right. All right, so let's start with the opening of the box. So just cut the, the tape that is left over here. And uh, then we'll remove whatever uh, staples there are. Alright, there's only two of them holding the thing down. Alright. So, let's have a closer look inside. All right, so, so let's have a look inside. We can see the damaged area here, but it's in the void. And at least for now, I don't see any damage to the bike. It looks pretty well protected. Got some foam pads that we'll probably use a bit later. You see here, there's they have a little plastic here to protect the uh, deraya. Some more pads over here. A cover for the handle. Everything is stuck. Alright, take this out. So, alright. So, this bike weighs about close to 60 pounds. So, can I take it out myself? Yes. But, Always good to have some some help from friends or family. So my son here is going to give me a hand to just pull it out. Definitely can do it uh, maybe by myself, but just to show safety first, instead of pulling your back, ask a friend to pull it out. And you definitely don't want to drop it on the floor. Uh, so we're going to pull it out here. Ready, Nathan? One, two, three. All right. Toolbox. Put it close to the box here. All right. Uh, thank you, Nathan. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. All right. So there's a few boxes that uh, dropped off. As we were pulling it, and definitely it does help to have two people on it. Foam for the disc brake in the front. And we'll have a look at these over here. And we got the seat. Alright, so we're going to move the box out of the way. So one additional thing I wanted to show was uh, that on the side of the box here, they put a QR code for, to show you the video for the um, assembly of this bike. So if you have any phone, uh, you simply put it over the barcode, click on the website QRL or QR code, and it brings you to the Aventon Support website. And you scroll up and you have the video here. And I've seen it. It's good. Not very detailed. I uh, would like to have had more detail in there, but uh, it's a start. All right. For safety also purposes, I put the bike over here, the rear tire, in this bike rack. So it's pretty stable and I can do my clipping on by myself. So I can start removing some of the guards that are over here. 
Uh, let me see here. This is, let's start with the front tire. That's one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Well, they spared no expense with the zip ties, which is great, so it doesn't rattle around. Uh, so I'm happy to see that. Uh, the more zip ties, the better. And you have the fender, front fender. It's also taped over here, so that's great. So I'll give this off to my handy associate. So we'll install the, the wheel a little later, so in, in the video installation we'll have that also done. All right. uh, let's see here, some stuff in the back. Some more little foam. I'm happy to see that they did not spare foam. Well, this is kind of unique. I see they used a rope instead of a zip tie. To prevent the rear tire from rotating so interesting uh, over here in the battery pack nice and well protected I like the packaging on the inside, definitely, really good. Right now, I don't see any scratches or any damages. Of course, it's best seen in the daylight. Uh, we're in a basement right now, just with some spotlights, but uh, looks good. Paint job looks good. I am impressed with the welds over here. Um, I have worked with welders and designed welds myself. And although you cannot tell the strength of a weld just by looking at it, you'll have to do some tensile testing, uh, some pull testing, some shear testing. But you know, if they put this much care into smoothing out the welds, you can probably be sure that they also took good care in doing a proper weld uh, there. So kudos on the welds, really, really good. Even where it's hard to kind of grind, the welds are down in here. You can do see a little bit less grinding because it's difficult to reach, but the welds are really nice. Probably also done by a robot. The welds on the inside of the fork over here are good. All right. So the last piece over here is the handlebar. So we'll try and get this. Oh, we got the keys over here, but we'll leave them attached so we don't lose them. More zip ties. And these are not cheap zip ties, so, you know, they didn't go with the small, flimsy zip ties. They put nice, dirty zip ties. And I see the display over here. Doesn't look damaged, so that's great. Okay. We'll do some cleanup a little later. All right. All right, I'm gonna leave this on this foam over here. I'm not afraid of damaging the carpet, uh, but you know, you can, just for safety sake and, and whatever, um, and then also make sure it doesn't scratch. I'll leave it on, on the plastic fork over here 
sorry, I'll leave it on the, the foam pad and uh, it'll stabilize and make it sturdier. And then I think that's about it for the unpacking. I think, uh, I think I'm happy. I'm really happy. They do have some labeling here for about the threading. And we're going to talk about that during the installation. But uh, looks really nice. Really nice. I was a little upset about the damage to the box, but the bike looks A-OK. -okay. So I'm really happy about that. And so on the next video, thank you for joining. Thank you for watching. And uh, so if you're going to be doing the unboxing yourself, my recommendation is to have at least another person stand by, at least just to pull it off. Um, have something. Most people don't have those part tool uh, stands to hold your bike on. Uh, but if you have a bike rack like this one over here, I think it definitely helps. As you can see, it just stays up by itself and it makes it easier to remove the packaging. Um, just home tools, diagonal cutters, uh, a regular house knife or a sharp blade to cut the, the tape and some pliers to remove the, um, the staples. Right? So anyways, we'll, uh, we'll talk back on yes, when we start doing the assembly of this bike. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining and see you soon. All right, so as I was unpackaging, I took out this guard that was over here and notice this kind of kind of squeezed and I'll zoom in here. Um, it seems like it was squeezed and there's some scraping damage on, on the cable here. Not too much to be concerned about, more about this. And at first I thought I saw this bent all the way down I thought the shaft was broken over here and I think it's designed to be open at, at the bottom. Let me see if I can take a video from the bottom. So this is a view from the bottom over here. And it looks like it was machined with an opening to thread it over here on purpose. but doesn't give me too much confidence a little concerned so it does have a protective cover and there's an opening over here for the protective cover so during assembly I'll be squeezing that in there right and we'll see if the motor works so it has a Venton branding on the motor so let's see what these boxes hold for us This is the power supply and a user's manual. So it has Aventon logo on it and it's a 100 to 240 2.5 amp max charger. So it's not a three. I was expecting a three amp charger, but all right, I'm in no hurry for charging it. Maybe the, it's a three for the uh, for the adventure, and that's why I'm doing these videos, is because there's not that many unboxing and assembly videos for the level. Haven't a user level electric bike throttle on demand Ooh, I think the wife is going to be excited about this here it talks about the Aventon app and some instructions here on disc brake hydraulic disc brake installation instruction so definitely something to read before I start the installation so what goodies do we have here let me just put everything out. There's a few loose nuts and bolts. Uh, 
Uh, okay. Make sure there's no nuts on the inside. All right. So we do have some grease. Now we'll go on the pedals and on the uh, saddle uh, stem. We've got a cover. Oh, this is a replacement part over here if it gets damaged on the Delayar. I can't remember what it's called. Delayar hanger and some axle motor axle protection cover. All right. That's that. We got the rear reflection light and the front reflection light. These came off, so let me just put these back over here. Uh, these are for the, I think the reflection lights, yep. The pedals, we got a left and it tells you the arrow in which to turn and the right. So this one right is clockwise, left is counterclockwise and I'll show you how to install those. They seem decent metal, maybe aluminum casting. And then there's the tool over here. So we have a few tools, which is great, but I also have some of my own hand tools. These are a little hard to get out. Let's see here. There's no labeling, as far as I can see. So we got a straight edge. We got very thin, maybe one millimeter, two, three, four, five millimeter, and a Phillips a screwdriver on this over here. So I think it's most of the tools, but you know, if you have some better tools, definitely something that uh, you should consider using instead of this. But you know, if you don't have any tools, at least they provide you something with it. One thing I noticed that they don't have here, and I've seen it on the Adventure bike, is a, a wrench, a pedal wrench, to tighten these over here, which uh, you will probably need, definitely need, to make sure that your pedals don't fall off. So I saw they include it for the Adventure. I'm a little disappointed they don't include it for the level. Right. But like I said, I have some tools, and uh, I'll definitely be using those. I noticed something over here, maybe to differentiate left from right. The left one here on the bolt has some striations, some grooves, whereas on the right side it doesn't. Maybe just a visual reminder on which side it should go. Not a bad idea. All right, let's go move on to the next step. All right, so I took out the battery from the bike, and this is a good, maybe, I would say five, ten, five pounds, 10 pounds uh, over here. And this is a, let's see here, a 48 volt, 14 amp hour. So 48 volts, 14 amp hour. And I don't know if these are Samsungs or Panasonic batteries, but the brand over here is DLG. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, and so it's very simple. Here's the power supply. Uh, once again, the power supply is a 100 to 240 volts, 2.5 amps max. Uh, so the output actually it says here. Oh, that's the input. Sorry. The output is 3 amps. So I stand corrected before This is a 3 amp charger. So that's good uh, And so there's a opening over here Here there's an opening Kind of sealed and it's a round one so you can't go wrong and you put it in It has a nice firm grip to it Right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this device right over here. Let's see. And it's a timer. So it's 15, 30, one hour, two hours, four hours, and six hours. So why am I using a timer? 
Well, the reason being is that if you leave it charging overnight uh, and it reaches above uh, 100%, or not above 100%, but from 90 to 100%, uh, what that does is it's going to cause dendrites in the battery and it's going to shorten the life of your battery. So typically for a lithium-ion battery, you want the charge to go between 10% and 90% and go within that range and that's going to extend the life of your battery. If you drain it to zero and recharge it up or if you leave it overnight or for long periods of time charging at 100% then dendrites are going to form in the lithium ion uh, chemistry and that's basically what reduces the life of your batteries. Right? So this is very simple, just plug it in here and then uh, you plug it into your outlet and you basically select how much time it is. So usually I can't see what percentage of the battery there is. There is a on off switch in the back over here and when you turn it on there's a green light so I don't know if that means that's good. It says RGB which typically stands for red, uh, green, blue for the colors uh, but I'm guessing that green is good and maybe yellow is bad and red is dead so we'll see how that goes right so you can check that over here and since they usually ship it at 50 percent i'm just going to charge it for about two hours and let it uh, sit there for two hours and then it's going to turn off by itself so i don't have to worry about uh, overcharging it so that's it